Hi, heroes. I'm Stan Lee. I can't blame you. And um, I'm really glad you're here today because we have a great guest. And he's, uh, I don't want you to let his age fool you. The fact that he's been in the business for so many years, uh, it's three years, I believe, and he's all of 23 years old, and I want you to know he is one of the top talents in the comic book business. He writes, he draws, he's a great guy, you'll love listening to him, and here he is, Rob Liefeld. Hiya, Rob, glad hey. to have you here. How you doing, Stan? Okay. And I want to get right into it, okay. and I want to find out how a guy like you, who looks legit in every other respect, ever got into the comic book business. How did it happen? How did I get into the comic book business? And how old um, were you when it happened? I was 19. 19. I was 19, and um, I, just always, I was always reading comics and got major enjoyment out of them, you know, as, as a kid, and decided pretty early on that that's what I wanted to do as a living. Um, went to some conventions, shows, and got to meet the other artists and the other professionals and saw how comic books were produced and, and tried to learn as much as I could from that. Uh, I figured I had to finish high school first or, you know, my parents would have, have a conniption fit. So we had to, we had to get through that. And uh, so, so once high school was finished and uh, I was just working some odd jobs, I said, I'm going to break into comic books. So for about a, a year, I worked a couple jobs, um, delivered pizzas, worked some construction in the daytime, and all the while, every free moment, you know, away from friends or whatever, working on my comic books. You mean and you were drawing in, in oh, all drawing, your spare yeah, time? Oh, yeah, dr drawing, yeah, yeah. Had you studied art, or did you just pick it um, up on your own? No, you know, the high school art classes, you know, draw an apple, draw a flower, I mean, and stuff. And, 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 and that was good. I mean, I, I learned my fundamentals, but I was always drawing or coloring or, or, or you know, tracing. I mean, I think I started out tracing, you know, when I was really? a kid. You know, and then you, and then you kind of graduate to, hey, I, can, I think I can draw this. I don't have to look at it or, or trace over it anymore. So I was doing stuff like that. Were you tracing comic book artwork? Oh, yeah. All oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, mainly comic book art. I mean, mm -hmm. comic books, they, I just thought they were the coolest. Um, you know, the big guys, the, the strong villains, you know, it was just exciting stuff. I and admire your taste and perception. Oh, yeah. And, and, uh, and so, so I, and naturally, I wanted to grow up and, and draw that stuff. Um, now, Mom and Dad weren't real thrilled about this because they weren't really sure, you know, comic books. You know, what, what's that about? I mean, I used to get in trouble for reading comic books. My, my dad would find them and, and, and throw them away. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, 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 Before they were, or after you read them? Um, oh, good question. <laughs> I, I, well, sometimes I'd have to hide them because it wasn't, I didn't have an opportune moment to you know, look them over. But I wasn't real good at hiding things. I'd hide them in the, in the washroom or whatever, and, and I'd go to find it, and, and then they'd say, you're looking for your comic book? It went with today's trash. And I'd be, really? Wow. I'd be, oh, yeah, they thought that that was bad news. They didn't want their kid tied up in comic books, but uh, n they don't complain anymore. They, they, they're, they're big fans of comic books now. Um, but anyway, uh, out of high school, having all this, you know, built all this up from, from a young age, um, every spare moment I was trying to draw, um, went to a local junior college, took some life drawing classes to see how the, how the body was in motion and stuff, but, but studying the guys I liked, seeing what made, you know, what made me respond to their work on paper, and uh, started mailing stuff off. Excuse in, me, in, one moment. You know, Who were some of the guys you liked? I think um, that would be interesting. Actually, uh, John Byrne, um, Frank Miller, George Perez, and those were the guys who actually were were, were currently doing comics. You mm -hmm. know, as I as I was collecting them, friends of mine would say, "Well, are you are you are you into Neil Adams, or are you are, are you are you familiar with Jack Kirby's work?" And so then I'd go, you know, and get turned onto their work, and uh, it was just, you know, I was just taking everything in as I could, you know? You sort and of became an amalgam of all that was best of oh, all. Oh, sure. Huh? I mean, I'd say, well, I like this. This guy's got a lot of detail, and this guy does cool figures, and this guy does great close-ups, and this guy's really moody. You know, and that guy draws really realistic, you know? And, you, and you're trying to find, well, what do I like about all these guys? And try and put it into some yeah. style that you could call your own. So, uh, so anyway, I was, I was sending off packages right and left to smaller companies. Um, you know, not, not the big two, being Marvel Comics and DC Comics. I was kind of in, in awe of them or, you know, afraid of them. Uh, a friend of mine called me up and said, hey, there's this big convention in San Francisco. I read about it in, uh, in one of these trade ma magazines. Comic book convention. Comic book convention. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been to a couple of those um, locally, but um, this one had tons of editors at it on, on, the, on the guest list. And I had already learned that, you know, that's how you get your job from the editors. That if, if they don't like your work, you're not going to get in. And... Uh, so we decided we had a free weekend to hop in the car, um, go to my aunt and uncle's place in San Francisco. I lived in Anaheim, Orange County, mm -hmm. so it was about a, anywhere from a seven to eight hour drive. Drove all Friday night, got, got to my aunt and uncle's, you know, 
kicked back. I was kind of nervous, you know. I was like, oh, tomorrow's it, you know. It was kind of like trial by fire, go in there and, you know, s see if they respond. So we got there bright and early, and I decided I'd go to hit all the small companies first. You know, Let build. me interrupt once okay. more for a second. No problem. What type of artwork were you bringing to show them? Um, all, I, I think all, people would want to know. All my own stuff. I mean, I created my own characters. And, uh, Did you do it as if it was a page of a oh, comic? Oh, yeah, they were all panels? comic sequential art. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't give them pinups. I didn't give them posters because I had already learned that that's not, you know, that's not what they wanted. So you it's made it look like a comic book page. Oh, sure, I drew my own comic them. books. Yeah. yeah, I had about ten pages of comic book art um, featuring my own characters. Um, and because, actually, the reason I, I featured my own characters was because that you know I was scared that I wasn't going to draw the Hulk as good as this guy did, or I'd draw uh -huh. Spider-Man as cool as this guy did. So I said, more if, if it's my characters, own, yeah. nobody's drawing them as yeah. good as I am right now because no one knows they exist. So we took them down to San Francisco and uh, showed them to the small companies and kind of build the build the build the courage. And eventually, th they were all pretty responsive, and everyone's pretty busy. The convention was pretty busy. And about midday, I went over to DC Comics and I said, well, I'll, I'll try and hit them up. And uh, Dick Giordano, who was one of the main guys at DC, I believe he, he still is, looked over my stuff, said he was interested, and, and, and responded with a, please send more. I gave him a Xerox packet. I had Xeroxes all my work, handed him out right and left. And then we were kind of at Marvel at this huge display. And, and my friend's going, go to Marvel, go talk to Marvel. And I, I was like, I don't know if I want to talk to Marvel. I don't, I don't think they're, they'd be interested. And he said, go talk to Marvel. So I walked over there, and a guy by the name of Mark Grunewald, an editor, looked over my work. And uh, he looked up at me and he said, how would you like to work for Marvel Comics? I fell over, you know, I was like, you're kidding me, right? And he said, no, no, I have something right here in the bag that I can give you. Um, some sketch, uh, some character sketches and uh, uh, like an eight-page story. You mean and right off the bat? Right, right there, you an on, the, on story. the spot. And you hadn't wanted to go to Marvel. Oh, right? I was terrified. Why was that? Why more terrified because of Marvel? It's, it's like they're the biggest game on the block. It was like know? pulling I mean, teeth. I knew I'd get oh, you to say oh, that. Oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. They, they, were, they were the big, you know, the biggest catch. Uh -huh. I mean, you, you figure, I, I didn't think I was quite, quite ready. I didn't have the confidence. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was I, the biggest one that really recognized oh, the, your, your well, stuff the best. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just extremely fortunate. I mean, the, not, <laughs> the ride home did not think of anything but, wow, I'm going to work in comics. I mean, that did not even I think of a trip. I can imagine how you yeah. felt. Yeah. So, so I came home and I was like, wow, I'm actually going to you know, work in and comics. And you had an eight-page story to start with. Um, yeah, they handed me uh, an eight-page story and said, and said, why don't you start, you know, start drawing this? And uh, he told me that if I didn't get in contact with him, to call him in a week. Uh -huh. Do you and remember what the story was? It was, uh, it was a story of the Black Panther. He was, uh, oh, it was for an yeah. Avengers book that they yeah. did. And so it was, a, it was the, a character called the Black Panther. Now, I never got to draw the story, you know, because they, they gave it to somebody else as well. And, and, uh, and then that person drew it and, and saw, it saw print. What I gathered was they gave a lot of different plots out to, to up-and-coming oh, artists. I didn't know that. I um, thought it was a definite assignment. So, well, it, I mean, it was a definite assignment, but I, they eventually got me more work. I mean, it, was, it wasn't they like it was a gag. They did something. Oh, else. sure. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, so then, I mean, from there on in, I was able to go, you know, go home and say, well, cool, you know, I can, I can, I can work these other jobs for just a little while longer, and then I'll be making my living from drawing comics, which is what I'd always, you know, looked forward to doing. And that's so, what you're doing now. Yeah, constantly. Son of a gun. Well, let me see. What I'd like to know is, in the beginning, what was the first strip that you did that was printed? The first Do you comic, remember? Yeah, it was yeah. a strip called Hawk and Dove for DC Comics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's weird how Yin Yang back... They, they, Marvel hired me on the spot at the uh -huh. convention uh -huh. and, was interested, and, and said they wanted me to do work. But at the time, you know, you, you tell your parents or you tell your friends, I'm working in comics, you better cough up some proof of that fact. And the per first person to get you, you know, something in the mail, because I called back about that plot they gave me, and they said, well, hold off on it. I mean, you know, talk to us a little before you do it, Marvel. Um, they wanted to walk me through it a little. And... Uh, I did, I did some character sketches like they had asked for this, this book that they were producing for Marvel. So I did send my first, you know, work off, but it wasn't like a really a story mm -hmm. to Marvel. It was some character designs that they had wanted. And, but, but DC sent me my first story. Like, here, get started on this. And, you know, I was just going to do the first thing that came to me. And so I, I was actually kind of bouncing between DC and Marvel for the time being. But um, the Hawk and Dove book was a five-issue miniseries, so it was real, it was very finite, you know, it was going to be over in five months, and while I was doing that, Marvel then called and, 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 and inquired about me doing regular work for them, which I was more than excited, you know, about doing so. so. What was the first job for, for Marvel? For Marvel, yeah. uh, the first job was actually a Spider-Man 
uh, story. It was uh, what they call an annual. It's like a special thing they give out once a year, you know. Yeah. And so I did a Spider-Man job, and that was, it's like weird. You're three pages into it, and you go, I'm drawing Spider-Man, you know. It's, it's, it's kind of weird, you know. It's like, because he's become so recognizable and so part, part of, you know, comic book history or whatever. And so, so I did Spider-Man, and then they moved me into some, uh, some X-Men books, did some X-Men stuff. And eventually there was a, a book that, um, called The New Mutants that they wanted That's to change, right. change things right. on, and they moved me into that. So. Isn't it incredible how you, as a beginner, in a sense, started out doing two of the top books and two of the best-selling books in the world? I was very for- I just keep The thing I always tell people is I was, just, I was very fortunate um, that, that you know, the stuff fit that. Maybe the people at Marvel also had the good sense enough to know what to give you. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> because you certainly did a great job. Now, you're now doing an X-Factor book, I believe. X-Force. X-Force. Yeah. X-Force. That's Everyone right. confuses them. Yeah. X-Factor, I, Force. Man. How many X-Books do we have? I think there's know? like eight, ten now. I mean, everything. They got, yeah. they got, there's the team books, and then each member of the team has their own book. So, yeah, I'll, people get all, all confused all the time. My I own just, editor. I used so. to know them all. I must admit, I get confused also. Oh, when, when there used to be one X-Men book and one Spider-Man book, yeah. and there's five Spider-Mans and there's five X-Men. So <laughs> when we get a good thing, we don't let it go. That's right. It. No. But anyway, the um, getting started as a pro, then you you didn't have too tough a time. I mean, you the minute somebody really saw your work, they were able to recognize it was good, and you did get started. Yeah. 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 And I think that's that's just terrific. It's it's an unusual story, but it's a great one. But you must have other interests too. Now, besides comics, I hear that you're big in basketball. In um, uh, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm big, big at trying fan. to play basketball. Big I'm a big fan, fan but yeah. I, I no, I don't want to get on the court and make a fool of myself with anybody who. Uh, <laughs> Do you go for much uh, exercise and sports? Actually, you know, the, with with being an artist as a living, mm-hmm. um, when I first got into comics, I would just sit at my. Dr- um, desk and draw and draw and draw and, and do the work and you get easily distracted if you didn't want to draw the page I found that I'd go and sit and watch TV for a while or I'd go and I'd eat a Snickers bar or six and you know eventually you know I was like wow I'm, I'm not getting much healthier this way so I think yeah you, you, you've got to get out and exercise and I always try and you know make it a, a nice blend of a day get out and do something you know that that's exercise every day because you just can't sit drawing. over that board all the no, time. No, not, not all. Not yeah. all. I used to be that way about writing. You know, you just can't sit over a typewriter and then later a computer all day long. You have to find other things to do. So I decided to interview artists. <laughs> there you <laughs> that go. Would, yeah, that break would, up your day. And boy, you can tell you're an artist. You haven't let go of that pencil. Yeah, since I know. I that this, and I want to tell you, you keep one. doodling. I want that page autographed before we okay, go. Okay, okay. That's, that's a deal. That's, that's a, deal. a promise. <laughs> now, let me ask you something else. Uh, And I think this would be interesting. Oh, by the way, I just want to let the world out there know that before this is over, we're going to see Rob doing some drawing, but we're saving the best for the last. Oh, okay. So tell me, how do you feel about comic strips themselves? What do you think makes one comic uh, book story better than another? What is it that makes your X-Men outsell Joe Blow's something else? You know what? I think... I. I've thought about this a lot sometimes. You go, why, why is this doing better than this, this particular book? Mm-hmm. I, think, I think it's the people who really, they take the time and the care and they put the effort into it. I think anything you do, once you put the effort into it, and especially something like this, producing 22 pages of artwork on a monthly basis is, is no you know, walk in the park. You have to you know, constantly, and, and to do it month after month after month, it's like you have to constantly recreate yourself, come up with something new, because if you don't, your readers are going to get bored, your fans are going to get bored, and they're going to move on to something else that has effort put into it, has created, you know. If you become lazy with your product, it's, it's going to result in the, in the readers, you know, a disinterest on their part. Um, you know, one thing that a lot of people don't realize, today, comic book stories have become so complex with yeah. plots and subplots and subtle characterization that a complete comic book story is almost like a motion picture. Yes. And if you think about it, people like yourself are doing a minimum of 12 comic book stories a year. Well, that's like doing 12 motion pictures a year, oh, which definitely. nobody can do. Definitely. And so the amount of creativity that's required is enormous. And I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, no, you didn't. It's a, it's a great point because a lot of people don't... Th- th- sometimes, I swear, I come in contact with this all the time. People meet you and they ask you what you do for a living and you mm-hmm. tell them you're a cartoonist and then they again say, well, what do you do for a living? And I think people don't... <laughs> you mean you get paid yeah, just to draw yeah. pictures? No, I think people open up their Sunday funnies or go buy that comic out of, uh, off the rack uh-huh. or see them and think that some machine 
produces this, or some race of people called cartoonists, you know, come up with this. It's like <laughs> they're well, mutants. You, yeah, you draw comics for a living. It's like they can't really grasp it. It's not something they can grasp, you know, because it's not something they're familiar with. Doctors, you know, plenty of yeah. doctors. Lawyers, you've met some in your lifetime, you know. Cartoonists, they're like this weird breed of people. People think, you know, and they can't. Like I said, I've just always felt that people think that some machine churns all this out. You, you know, know, it's a funny thing about comic books. They've changed so in recent years. They've gotten more respect. I remember when I first started, and we're going back a few centuries ago, <laughs> but I'd be at a cocktail party with my wife, and someone would come over and say, uh, hello, what do you do for a living? And I knew the reaction I would oh, get. Yeah. So I would say, well, I'm a writer, and I would try to walk away. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they'd grab me, and what do you write? Exactly. And I still tried to fudge it. I'd say, uh, uh, stories for children. Grab me again. Uh, what kind of stories? Where are they published? Oh, in magazines. Uh -huh. What kind of magazines? And finally, I had to say comic books. And suddenly, the hand would come off my shoulder you got it. and they'd exactly. walk away. Exactly, because they, it's like they didn't understand or they don't take it seriously. But now, but now, I go to a party and everybody pushes past Steven Spielberg. Oh, definitely. And, Where's and, Stan Lee? And, that's right. And, hey, there's a guy who works in comics that's and right. they're all around. That's it's right. a whole different thing. That's you know? right. So um, anyway, I want to get back to what you said. You were saying that you got to work hard and you have to take it seriously, but you and I know it's got to be more than that because there are a lot of artists and writers who work hard, who take it seriously, who give it their best shot, but they still don't do things that are big winners. So okay. I, I'm waiting for you to say, and you know what I'm waiting no, for you to I, say. You know what, I, it's, I don't want to sound, you know, it's like, you gotta I don't want to sound like a, a comics philosopher or whatever, but, you know, it's, it's, I think it boils down to, this is, oh boy, it's personal vision. I think what, what, you know, you look at the different artists that I liked a lot, mm -hmm. there were certain signature things they did all the time. You know, um, they, 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 they they knew it was like there was a formula to what they were doing. They had a personal formula, a personal vision, and you saw that on the page. They felt very strongly about what you're doing. That's where I think the effort and the interest gets into it. I think there's people here who they would be just as happy to draw, you know, just the same old story of Spider-Man month in and month out and grab the paycheck, and they're getting to be able to draw. They're drawing. They're, they're having fun drawing, but they don't want to do much more than, you know, kind of draw for a living. They're getting to draw for a living. I think the guys that stand out are the guys that, um, they just... It's so into them, it's bursting out of their head, you know? I mean, there's always new ideas. When I talk to my editors at Marvel or, or, or anyone I'm working with creatively, they always say, you know, slow down, slow down, because I'll get ahead of myself and they'll say, wait, we have to take care of these six points before you bring up six more points, because you just want to, you know, when you have good ideas, you want to cram them all, all at once. You want to go, oh, man, I want to show the kid this this month, too. You know, you One start thing we forgot to mention, you also do your own plots, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do all the plots. So you I not only draw the strip, but you come up with the idea for the story. It's, essentially, it's, you write, you, it's writing the story. Mm -hmm. I don't feel that I've ever been like a wordsmith. I mean... I, I have a tendency to stutter and get you know, I know you're doing pretty good now. Yeah, exactly. I hate the idea that you're showing me up, but we'll talk about that <laughs> but, later. But anyway, um, so so I figured, why not let somebody who's better with that handle that? And, and Marvel, So someone Marvel else puts fun. in the dialogue oh, yeah. and the yeah. captions. Yeah. You come up with the basic plot, you draw it, and then somebody puts in sure. the words yes. you read on the and, page. And you know what? I have no desire. Maybe one day I'll get real, real, you know, a whole bunch of courage up and put words in their mouth. But I think that would just probably ruin... The, 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 the picture as a whole. Right now what I'm good at is coming up with plots and creating stories and situations, mm -hmm. but, but if they got to, if I had to be the guy who put the words in their mouth to talk and speak, they'd, they'd be, <laughs> it'd be gibberish. Now let so. me just say something else. If anybody out there is wondering, why are we listening to this man's philosophy? <laughs> what does he know that's more than anyone else? There's one little fact I forgot to mention, which okay. I think is of more than passing interest. Um, mm -hmm. Your newest comic book, X-Force. How many copies would you say it looks like it's going to sell? Um, we're, again, very fortunate. It, it did very well. I think it, it, it sold 3.7 copies, and they sold out, and they had... 3.7 what? Million. Oh, yeah, million. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think that's an million. important key yeah. word, 3.7 million copies, and then there was uh -huh. another 1.5 added on that. It, it came out above 5 million copies. More so. than 5 million copies. Yeah, yeah and you know what? It, it's... It's, it's weird, it's, you just kind of hear that, and it didn't really phase me until a few uh, weeks later, I read about this band who, um, their record company was really happy about them selling a million copies, because they got, you know, uh -huh. one, I think platinum, yeah. or, or something like that, gold, platinum, silver, bronze, and, and then you kind of go, wow, that's a lot of comics to sell. You're going uranium. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, but I, I, really I, well, don't know. I think it's even more than a lot of comic books. I think that is more than any comic book have ever sold since time began. For now. 
All right. For now. Oh, well, we'll break your record next week, oh, probably. Th and that's and the goal. It'll be you yeah. who breaks it. No. But I mean, <laughs> it's a phenomenal, fantastic thing to sell that many million comic books. It was a surprise. It was... And that's why I'm listening with rapt attention, and I want oh, to learn on. what I can you've sold, about what makes if, it. If we tallied up all, everything you've sold, it'd be in the billions. So. Yeah, but it was over a period of years and a lot of issues. <laughs> yeah, well. It isn't fair to torture the viewers any longer. I mean, sitting here with you this way, it's like I'm, I'm with the world's greatest, or one of the world's greatest pianists, and I'm not letting him play the piano or I'm with one of the world's great magicians and not letting him do a trick. I mean, here's a guy whose artwork is totally fantastic and phenomenal, and we haven't let you draw yet, and we're going to rectify that right okay. now. How about coming over to that drawing board over there and showing everybody what it is we're talking okay, about? Okay, let's huh? do it. Terrific. All right. I have a feeling that our viewers would probably love to see you create a brand new character in front of their eyes. Okay, exclusively, Think you're up to it? exclusively on this show. Yeah, yeah. Terrific. Uh, as a matter of fact, the other day, I'm just going to start right now. How do you start with a new character? What do you think of first? The name? Yeah, the name. I think the name is really important. Uh, kids don't get excited over, you know, Petunia Man or, or you know, <laughs> Milk Man. They, they want the Hulk or Cable, or this new name I got for this guy, his name is Die Hard. Die Hard? Yeah, it sounds, oh, sensational. sounds deadly. Sounds deadly. You know, I think the kids would like him. So, first of all, we give Wait him a Bruce standard... Wait Bruce Willis gets after you. Oh, yeah. He, he'll be a big fan of this character. Okay. okay. So, we, okay. you know you're going to call him Die Hard. Now, once you've got the name, what do you do? I then try and give a visual that goes along with that name. You uh -huh. know, something like, like I already said, Die Hard seems to... to be like a deadly type name. You'd think of something, you know, oh, Die Hard. Doesn't sound like a cream puff at all. No, exactly. So anyway, so we're sitting here and we're drawing him. And I've got about the basics down here and I'll go to ink right now. I noticed that all these heroic characters, they kind of stand like this, bow-legged with their arms like that, right? Oh, sure. They're, that's showing how tough they are. That's you know? right. How, how wide they can swing. And I wonder if I would apart. look tough if I stood like that. I don't oh, know. Gotta get, you know <laughs> flex your muscles, Stan. But the drawings sure look that way. Okay, so... Now, anyway. do you, in your mind now, know what he's going to look like? Are you just drawing this according to a picture you've already got yeah, in your yeah, mind? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, something like I said, he'll be a tough guy. And first of all, his, his face. His uh -huh. face, you know. Gotta have um, a face. Yeah, gotta have a face. And this face, you know, even this big jet black stripe down the middle here. And it's mysterious. He, you can't see his face. That's pretty mysterious. And maybe we'll never show his face. So the kids will always wonder, who is this guy? And so, there he's got his, and black, you know, black, black kind of says something. Maybe we'll make him all black and red or something like that. The That's colors. what I like about your drawings. They all make a statement in some way. Okay. And then we've got, okay, we're going to give him the chest right here. So there's a big black vertical line going down the face between the eyes, covering the nose and where the mouth would be. So right? far, so far. And right now I'm just going to go out and out underline and outline what I've kind of got down in his, as his anatomy, you know, his, right. his figure. And you put it in very lightly in pencil first just to give yourself, yourself a guide. Yeah, just a guideline. I, you know, I noticed one thing about your drawings. You don't finish a line very often. You, you draw in a staccato way. You draw a little bit, then another little bit, then another little bit. You leave spaces between the lines. That's very interesting. Stan, that's one of my trade secrets. You know, really? Break up the lines. Yeah, well, it's only you and me know. talking. You can talk about okay, it. Okay, okay. Let's see. It's safe with us. I hope. Um, okay, so here, I'm going through, got his anatomy pretty much down. You know, got him some strength to his figure. Uh-huh. You know, again. Yeah, I'd say he looks pretty strong. Okay, we're almost done here. We've got the legs done. Give him some multiple muscles in his legs. Sometimes, you know, the fans go, where do they get all that muscle? You know, they drink their milk every morning. They're, they're <laughs> strong you, guys. You'd be okay if you didn't draw so slowly. I think you'd really be... You'd yeah, be yeah, i got to draw faster. That's, what I'm, that's my new goal for the new... You well, know, you draw a minimum here. of 20-some-odd pages a month, right? Yeah. And minimum. That's, and that's no walk in the park. I mean, it's, 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 it takes some effort. It's and really incredible. You draw it in pencil, then you draw it in ink? Yeah. That's after you've plotted the story? Yeah, after I've written the story, and then I lightly sketch it out, and then we go to ink. Okay, so we've got his figure down. Okay. Okay, so let's give him some gear. I now, this like is the exciting part, putting the costume on, right? Yep. And we'll give him some gear. And you always, I always liked gear when I was a kid. Yeah, who doesn't? You always seem to throw something around the shoulders. Which yeah, is pretty it's, dramatic. 
It's a fashion statement. Yeah. So we're giving, well, we're giving him a fashion statement. Here. To make it some high-tech mumbo-jumbo, give him some more lines, more lines, you know, looks like more technology, more hardware. My wife would say she loves the way you accessorize these guys. Yeah, they're, they're, they're definite fashion, fashion plates. Okay, so now I'm going through giving a little more muscle. Okay, we've got some stuff on his shoulders, you know, we've got to give him some kind of some kind of cut for his costume. Okay, we'll, we'll start with his shoulders here, and we'll go over here, and then we'll cut down. Okay, we'll do something like that. Uh huh. Then we'll cut in here, and we'll, let's see, we'll do this. I'll blacken all this in, so it'll be clearer to see in just a second. And we'll It'll have a totally different look by the time you blacken it in. Yeah, yeah. I would have a feeling, looking at him, that he's more physical than cerebral. Is that that's uh, just a wild so. guess? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that'd be safe to say. So, okay, see, so we got him the lines under the eyes, uh -huh, kind of makes him uh -huh. look mad. We'll give him some little ankle. Here, let's give him a guy named Die Hard. He should be able to fly around so we can fly down on the people and then swat them. So there we've got, he's got some jets. <laughs> this is what here. enables him to fly. These are little jets, are they? Yeah. I should have known that. Okay, so we're giving him his neck thing. What would his personality be, would you say? Uh, wouldn't talk much. Kind of uh -huh. guy that gets the job done. Doesn't Clint Eastwoody? Very much kind so. Kind of like Stan yeah. Lee. And oh, definitely. Real rugged and definitely. strong very, silent. I, very I much in that, that mold of Stan sure, Lee, Arnold Schwarzenegger, that. Bronson. Yeah. Arnie, Stan, and uh, Charlie. And Die Hard. And Die Hard. Okay, here, we're just going to go through real quick. Does he have a special superpower? Um, Should have been my first He's question. got it all. He, 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 can, he, can, he can do anything. Really? He can fly. That's can, not a bad talent. He's strong. Definitely. Comes in handy. He no, flies. He's, 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 he's strong. He's, he flies. He can, let's say he can, he's got super strength, can lift things, throw them at people, throw cars, I'm throw buildings. I'm almost afraid to ask the next question. I hope he's a good guy. Oh, definitely. Oh, thank definitely. goodness. Definitely on the side of good. Uh-huh. Because there's too many bad guys out there. And, and the good guys need to be more powerful. I would therefore. say so. We need okay. a lot of diehards so, around. So we're going through, we're giving the highlights, giving the little black shines, giving more detail, more detail in the work. Okay. It seems okay. you start with a thin pencil, then you get a thicker little black marker, then you get a very heavy marker. What will the next thing you use be, a paintbrush? <laughs> uh, get some colored markers if we add some. Really? We go th throw some oh, color Oh, sorry, we don't. Oh, yeah. So there we go. And, okay. Now I'm going to go in. Actually, okay, he's got his chest. We've got all this stuff covered. Let's see. Oh, God, he's blacking his foot in. And there. Now we got a new character. Die, Die hard. hard. Okay. You letter also. Is oh. there no end to your talents? <laughs> <laughs> I can talk and I letter. used to letter like that. I love that kind of lettering. Did you? I think There's yeah, probably it's a piece. name for it, and I don't know what it is, but I love that style. Amateur. Yeah, maybe that's why there I love go. it. Die hard. Okay, okay, why don't we put him through? We'll put him through some paces here. But let's see, does he any more gear put some more shine yeah, he doesn't have as much gear as you usually put on does he yeah if he's gonna I mean, fly just around a couple you know, of shoulder he, things is all a couple I see. shoulder things some wrist things over here we got him we yeah, gave well, him some wrist things that. now right they get a little more okay different. okay so there we got that and these are these are fists kids this is what he's gonna punch you with right and he's not wearing any type of rifles or guns no or not this guy well, he's, he's strictly physical uh -huh. now if i was going to create like a more commando type guy like like say we'll, we'll just create a more commando type guy Go over here. Okay, we'll have this guy put him in another strong stance while I'm carrying a big gun. Do you have a name for him? Let's Joe call Commando. Him, let's call him Cross. How do you spell it? C R O S S. All right, Cross. Okay. Put his eyes in here. I assume he's always angry. He's not a happy guy. No. I, I mean, they're I never happy, probably, are they? Have you no, noticed they're that? All pretty, they're pretty never unhappy. happy. Well, they, what they do isn't, isn't easy, and it's not, you know... Yeah. It's not I think nice since job. Howard the Duck, we haven't had too many happy characters, <laughs> have we? That's true. That's true. So, anyway, we'll make this tough guy here and just show you how quickly how I would approach this differently. Okay, we've just got... just going to dab what, his what eyes What power in. would you say Cross has? Well, since Cross, we're going to give him some accessories and more guns and weapons. More gear than... Yeah, the, well, we're just going to say, yeah... Die Hard. Die Hard's got more like superpowers. Cross here. Give him a little spit curl here. Oh, yeah. I love that spit curl. And he relies on his um, gadgets, right? His yes, equipment. Yes. So anyway, we're just going to give this face here. Yeah, so that's the a kids, pretty handsome face you're drawing. So the there. kids know who they're looking at here. He looks very noble. Yeah? Very noble, but yeah. gets the job done and, and like do anything face. to get the job done. What do you think? You think they'll go for that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think so. Okay, okay. This is how I'd approach him now. Giant neck. 
right. right now. Okay. Right. Now, if we're going to give him gear... Now, it's the gear that really turns yeah, me cause, on. Because you criticized Die Hard because he right. didn't have Yeah, I, Die Hard didn't make it for me. No, okay. Gear. I'm sorry. Okay, well, here. Well, why don't we All put right. a, a shoulder pad over here? And over here, we'll, we'll got to give him a huge chest again. This guy, he'll be even bigger than Die Hard. You know, every time I think of your artwork, the first thought that comes to mind is huge shoulder pads. Okay. I'm surprised your T-shirt doesn't have a lot of padding in it. Yeah. I'm just not as big as these guys. Wouldn't look good on me. I don't know how they how big they'd be without all the equipment. Okay. No, I guess he's pretty big. So, okay. Now with this, we're going to... Wish gonna, you wouldn't make it look so easy. We're going to accessorize this guy to the uh, teeth. Okay. okay. We're going to give him some pockets over here because he can carry his ammo and his bubble gum. Have you ever drawn and him before or are you making him up now? This is the world premiere. Really? Yes. So, so I'm in at the beginning of a new superhero definitely. called Cross. Cross. And obviously, if our lawyers are tuning in, you and I are creating this together, so we of both share the copyright. I mean, you couldn't have done it. Have your lawyer call it. mine. Okay, my people but will call you. I got a great tagline for him already. What's don't. that? He's the guy you don't want to cross. Very good. Oh, that's good. There you go. I like that. I like We're that. on a roll, Stan. Yes, we're going to we're gonna sell a bazillion comi <laughs> commies. Commies. I have a feeling comics. with your artwork, we'd sell a billion of anything. Nah. Cross is going to be the big seller. Everyone's going to have a Cross comic book because he's cool and he's accessorized. Okay, now we're putting these things on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. Okay. And... Do you ever say to yourself, what do these things on the shoulders do? Oh, or sure. Do you just have he would grab these off. He would grab those off and throw them and they'd like explode. Like boomerangs? Oh, sure. like explosives. Okay. Explosives, yeah. Great. To get him out on, in a pinch. There you go with the little lines that have little spaces in them again. I'm I telling like you, that. the more you point like that out, that. the more you're going to draw attention to it. And then I'm going to have mass competition. <laughs> no, nobody else would know how to do it like you. Let's hope not. Okay, so then give him some more belts, mm -hmm. some more gear. Give him a big tank top for his rippling muscles. There's his, ch his chest. Here, okay, and his belt is full of more stuff than you would imagine. Right. Just right. all sorts of gear. Here's the gun. And gun every pocket. one of those compartments holds something different. Oh, definitely. And here's his belt buckle or six. And there's yep. some more explosives. There's another pocket. Okay. I'm going to give you two here. minutes to finish the accessories. Let's see how you go. Okay, let's see how fast can we accessorize What about that guy? wristband there? What is okay, that Okay, you doing? know what? You know what we're going to do? We're going to give him spikes. Oh, he's got to have spikes. Okay, spikes. So if he misses you with his fist, he gets you with his forearm. Yeah, and we're going to talk about spike later, right? <laughs> So. That's why I want to rush you. There's one subject we forgot to cover. Okay, well, we're we'll going to get back to, to that table and get okay, to it. Okay, but we first, we've got to exercise him. How, how am I doing on time? I think you've got about another minute to go. Okay, how about we give him a holster right here? Now, trying to get you nervous, but be nervous. Oh, no, There's I'm, I'm good under pressure. I'm good under pressure. <laughs> I see that. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're going to get this. Give him a glove on this hand. We didn't glove that hand. So we'll give him a glove on this hand. Does the glove do anything, or it's just a glove? Nah, it's just so his hands don't get dirty. I bet if he had time to think of it, the glove would do something. Oh, sure we would. But here's the. The big bazooka gun. And that's behind him. He's carrying that on his shoulder. And oh, probably yeah. Come down it's coming there. over here. Right. Boom. We got this here. Okay. Actually, I'm going to go to the thick pin so we can hurry this up and I can make your, your incredible deadline that you put me under. No, and there's just one more subject that I think I want to talk about. And, but this has been absolutely great. So now, does he have special kind of boots? Yeah, we'll put pads on his boots. Any spikes on him? Uh... On these, on these one over here. On the side, that's good, on the side. We'll give him spikes on the now side. Now, you see, that's my contribution, right? Okay, you got okay, it. Okay, so it's definitely a collaboration. Have your lawyer call me, Stan. Okay. I think you did a good job on my character, too. Hey, thanks. Actually, why don't, why don't we... Might as well put we... spikes all over. Heck, yeah. No one will Certainly touch on no the one shoulder. Will, no, no one will get near him. Uh, I hope what? he doesn't tilt his head down like that. He's oh, dead. Oh, me too. Cut his ear off. Okay. Another weapon back there? So now, see, you like him? You like him? Is he accessorized I enough? think he's great. I really okay. do. And Person. his name is Cross. Cross. Now, I hope everybody will remember, they saw him, they saw our creation first, right here, right? <laughs> yeah, right here, right here. <laughs> oh, on that's the, terrific. On your video show. Okay. So he's hairy. Oh, throw a little more hair A little more chest. chest hair. You always put that in, don't you? And there we go. Cross is history. That is great. So I we hope the cross, camera is catching this beautifully. We'll put, oh, how about this? We'll put cross. In our style of lettering. Oh, yes. The infamous style. But the only thing when you do that kind of lettering... It must always overlap, you see, like that S should be like that. Oh, you actually, never let them touch each other. You that's see, right. Like, like that's, there. Yeah, right. I made a mistake there. So you didn't, about 100, but it's okay. You're, okay, you're we'll all right. Put a big book. cross. There, that's, that's his logo. Thanks Terrific. for that, Stan. All right, let's get back, and we're going to talk about the one subject I've been saving till the end, which okay. fascinates me. Okay. okay. All right, let's Terrific. do it. What I wanted to say, and I've been waiting all during our little talk, 
I understand that this is not your first bout in showbiz. <laughs> I understand that you are an old timer at this sort of thing. Uh, not and quite. That you have done a world famous commercial, which almost everybody has seen, and I think I would love it if you would just tell us about it. Um, okay, I'm going to assume you're talking about the 501 commercial. Well, what it's the else? Only, would the, only, it be? It's the only commercial okay. I've done. Um, yeah, they, they they have this Levi's 501 ad campaign, and the and the gist of the whole campaign is to get people who do unique jobs for a living, and then they plug the jeans through that. And, and you know, you wear your 501s while you bungee cord jump, or while you milk the cow, or in this case, it was I was fortunate enough while I draw comic books. Uh -huh. There was a phone number that came on the screen, and and you know said if you do something interesting in your 501s, why don't you call? So I was just as a fluke. I wrote the number down on my board as I was drawing, and I called, and they asked to leave a 45-second message, and I told them that, you know, my name was Rob Liefeld, I told them how old I was, where I, where I lived, what I did for a living, I worked for Marvel Comics, and if they wanted to find out more, call me back. A couple weeks went by, and I really didn't hear anything back from them. And then one evening, uh, about 9 o'clock, it was later in the evening, it surprised me, they gave me a call, and uh, Levi, said they were Levi, uh -huh. the Levi's company, and uh, that they had got my call, and they were interested in, in, in doing the commercial. So to make a long story short, eventually they did, everything got hammered out, and um, the cool thing was, right before it started, they said, well, you know, Spike Lee directs these. And I'm, you know, I'm a big <laughs> Spike Lee fan. How can you not be? Oh, yeah, and, yeah. and, and uh, really enjoy all his movies, and, and have always thought that they had like a comic book element to them in, in, in the they style do. of which yeah. he directs. Yeah. Um, and, and so I was really excited. That was a real highlight. So while doing the commercial, they asked me several questions that had to do with comics. I mean, actually about 100 questions. They mm -hmm. sit there and, you film, and, and they filmed a lot of information, which they then cut down to a 30-second ad spot. But it was, it was amazing. He really knew so much about comics. Yeah. And, and, and a real, this will make you happy, a real big Marvel comics fan, <laughs> specifically. And just knew all about, asked me about Prince Namor, the Submariner, does he still have wings on his feet? And, <laughs> That's and, wonderful. And the Invisible Girl. And, yeah. and so it was, it was just really nice. And the thing that really I really, really got excited about um, was that it was a chance to um, kind of get comics on TV every day. I got you. you. Know? Yeah. And, and, and that's what it's turned out to be. Uh, it, it was pretty funny. Um, when I saw the commercial, it was pretty unexpected. And they had shot me in a blue, a blue room and, and said that they would put my characters in the background with me. And I was pretty excited. Um, tr kept trying to visualize it. But one night, just with, sitting with a bunch of friends, we were watching a TV show and... The commercial came on, and uh, I didn't expect it, and it was just—it was a real treat to see it, and it, it's, it's just neat. It, what did the commercial actually show for anybody who hasn't seen okay, it? Okay, it, it starts off with um, me drawing in my office, the studio, and it asks um, about how long I've been drawing comics. It asked about how my parents felt about it. A disembodied voice asks you these. Yeah, things? this is Spike Lee. Yeah. Spike Lee is asking. But you don't see him on. on camera. Um, you see his body at one point, and then I, in, in the middle of the commercial, he asked me to draw. Him, he says, who is this? And I say, it's Spike Man. He, he had wanted to see himself great. As, a, as, 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 a, as, a, as a superhero. Uh -huh. So we gave him spikes, as you can already see, that I'm very fond of. And, uh, and I gave him a long, billowing cape, and I had his hat on. And, uh, and, and it, it, was, it was pretty funny, you know, made him into a superhero. A real big fan of comics. And, uh, and so, so it was just nice. And I think the, the cool thing is that it kind of legitimizes to kids their hobby. You know, that comics, yeah. wow, yeah. it's on MTV, it's on... So I think it's cool. I hope more things like that, you know, happen. I, I, it would be nice to see comics comp continue to break into the mainstream, you know, through whatever, whatever it is, m movies, commercials, television, you know. Rob, I got to tell you, I think that you are a great spokesman for the comic industry, a great evangelist <laughs> for comicdom, and I think you've made it very clear to everybody who's been watching this why we call this series the comic book greats. And I thank you very Thanks much. Thanks a lot, Stan. Never had a better time. Okay. And I hope we can do it again. All right. Thank Bye. you.